Welcome back to My Conscious Dad on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Today, our show is called... You, I'm sorry, that was last week's show. <laughs> Today, our show is called... If, if, um, stop sorry, trying I'm to all, change... It's, stop trying to change other people. You can't. Let them be. I got it. Let them be. There you go. <laughs> okay, so before the break, I asked you, since we're talking about change, not changing people, how do you tell your spouse or your significant other that they need to change for your kids? I love this question because, um, first of all, you can't tell your, your spouse to change. You can't tell the, the father of your son or your daughter that they have to change. You can't tell your wife that they have to change. You have to decide that you are going to be the change. And the reason why I love this question the most is because I had to um, have this own, my own breakthrough in this area when it came to my own personal growth 23 years ago when I attended a, a transformational uh, training and realized that I wanted to become a better father. I wanted to become a better husband. And so what it, what it really forced me to do was to sit down with your mom, my wife, and really have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And it really forced me to lean on every trump card i had in my back pocket it, it really forced me to look at everything that i needed to cash in i cashed in that night and said you know this is what i'm committing my life to i want to be a better dad i want to be a better husband i want uh to be a better human being for our community for the world but more importantly for our family and when i did that i enrolled my wife into wanting to embark on that journey with me which means it was a challenging uh and a difficult decision for her to look at herself because you know she had to look at herself and say okay i want that for myself too not i want to do it for you or i want to do it for my kids each person has to decide that they want to do it for themselves and i was you know i don't know if i want to call it lucky or you know bl i'll call it blessed i was blessed that my wife at the time decided that she was in she said if you're in i'm in and we decided to embark on our own personal development journeys by ourselves but share the journey together in our marriage in our in our co-parenting and so we've just embarked on a journey where we're going to constantly look at ourselves and take responsibility for our own growth and look at our kids and say what are, what's missing in my kids what do i want for them and then whatever that is i need to figure out how to add that into the relationship i need to be the example and then once i'm being the example then i can speak about it then i can teach it i can talk about it i can open up possibilities i can plant seeds in my kids as i'm being that example so it's it's a you know i i love the question because it comes up a lot in my coaching practice with parents that become conscious like i might have a um a mom that just gets it and she's excited and you know her husband is not into it doesn't want to change <laughs> you know doesn't like personal growth it whatever just doesn't want to do anything is just really comfortable with being who he is and in his his role as a father and you know working and he feels that's good enough and he doesn't want anything to do with it so it's a, it's, it's a challenging i think feat for a mom or a dad to decide that they want to take their you know their commitment to being a, a, an effective parent to the next level but then you're gonna have to enroll your 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 spouse to get on the same page because if not um you're both you're both working on two different things one of you is conscious one of you is unconscious you're working with your son or daughter and you're taking learning how to help them get four or five steps forward and then the time they're spending with your spouse they're taking seven steps back and i see this a lot in uh, marriages that are broken you know um, i get the kids for you know a weekend and then and then my spouse gets the kids for a weekend while they're with you there you got some great rules and you're loving and compassionate and you create this amazing nurturing environment for your sons or daughters to discover their greatness and learn how to uh, express their emotions in a healthy way and then they go home to the dad's house or the mom's house and then they're running amok so it's a challenge. It definitely is a challenge, um, but it starts with you deciding that you, you want it to be different first. You you can't make other people change. That's part of the topic today is it, you just can't. Yeah, and we also, um, we kind of talk about how words are really important. So as you were saying that, I was imagining somebody trying to have a convers that conversation not about changing but also embarking on this journey with you and, and and for your kids and for yourself and i'm imagining somebody coming from i guess 
a not as loving place and saying, hey, you need to change for our kids, you know, which is not necessarily the right words. So if you really sit down and you think about which words you're going to use, which words are effective and powerful, it's probably going to look a lot different. Well, if, yeah, just you saying, hey, you need to change for our kids. You need to be a better mom. That's I mean, anything that comes after you, you're already shooting yourself in the foot. So just throw that out. If you're going to if you use that tactic, throw it out of your tool belt because that doesn't work. When every, anything that comes after, hey, you should or you need to, um, right, right off the bat, you're going to get the other person to be defensive. Walls are going to come up. They're going to hear that you're blaming them. Um, and, and furthermore, you're coming from the victim perspective as, as though you have no power. You're powerless, and it really depends on the other person to change before you can see a change in the kids. What's powerful is you deciding, no, 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 I need to change. I need to grow. I need to learn. I need to discover you know, I need to go back and and figure out how to reinvent myself. And as I'm doing that, I'm inviting you to be a part of that. And so what will happen is with parents that have a spouse, whether they're currently married to them or they have an ex, they just decide, you know what, I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to be the best mom I can be. And I'm just going to really work on myself. And I'm just going to keep encouraging their father uh, a little bit at a time, day by day, week by week, month by month, even year by year to want to, you know, partner up with me and 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 be that change for our kids. And and I think of most of the time, eventually it does happen. Uh, but but most of us want it to happen simultaneously or or overnight. And they don't realize that, you know, you can't make people, you can't force people to change. But what you can do is inspire them to change. You can empower people to grow. You can influence others. You can invite. There's different words um, for different ways of being to get people to want to grow along with you. And I think that's the more, that's the power play is inviting people to come play. Just like if you want to start working out and, and you don't want to go by yourself, how are you going to convince your best friend or your sister or somebody in your family to go with you? I definitely wouldn't say you need to go to the gym. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what's going to come out of your mouth? I'd probably start off with me saying, Hey, I'm going to start doing this. Why don't you try it out and see if it's something you want to do too? Okay. How about, hey, um, I would love your support. Would you be Would you be willing to support me for the first thirty days? Kind of, kind of like tricking them, right? Yeah. What if you tricked them into, hey, come support me for the first thirty days, and and all of a sudden on day twenty eight, and you're like, hey, I really appreciate your support. You're you're off the hook, and they're like, you know what? I kind of like this. Is it okay if I stay? Absolutely. You know, so it's be an invitation first, and it's got to be an invite, um, an authentic, um, loving, compassionate invitation. And then go day by day. See if you can just keep just keep inviting. Some of the best breakthroughs I've had is when some of my mentors just keep inviting me. And especially with the physical challenge I've been doing in the last year and a half is um, I've had people just keep inviting me and inviting me. And, and that's what I love about being around people that love you and care about you and believe in you is just be a great invitation and be rigorous about it. Don't get don't get mad because somebody rejected your second invitation or your 10. Sometimes people need to be invited 20. 30 50 times of finally they're like okay fine i'll go and then they're like oh my god this is the most amazing thing in the world you changed my life so you have to learn how to just be constantly be an invitation and be patient with it well yeah and there's there's other scenarios where it goes the other way right and you constantly be an invitation and so much so until you get tired and there's kind of an unknown line of when you decide to just draw and quit and that's obviously up to you but I know for example a lot of my friends I'm constantly inviting them to workshops and trainings and being a part of what I'm up to and there's only so many no's that I get before I stop asking and then sometimes I'll get a friend who says well how come you never asked me to go with you I'm like I ask you all the time and they're like well not anymore and now they want to go because I stopped asking them so but that doesn't necessarily work on everybody I love this topic because we're going to go in a different direction. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're going to go on a direction um, regarding the no's. You've decided that no means something to you, correct? Right. Right. Now, to me, guess what no means? No? Yeah, it just means no. <laughs> you, you've decided no means something else. You've created five or six different stories around the word no. 
to me, I've learned how to let go of all the stories that I've created around the meaning of no. To me now, no just means no. So every time I invite somebody and they say no, no just means no. It doesn't mean no, you know, stop vi- stop inviting me. No, what what's wrong with you? D- can't you get the hint? Or no, you're bugging me. Or no, I've took all those stories and I've squashed them. And to me, no just means no. To you, if somebody says no, it's the end of the world because you've created all these scenarios around it. Like, you know, and so you get offended when somebody tells you no, especially if it's a third or fifth or seventh time that you've asked or you've invited, correct? Yeah. And that's why that's why you have a tolerance for how many no's you can take rather than, you know what, to the day I die, I'm going to always invite you to this one thing. And, and it doesn't matter to me how many no's you give me because each no doesn't signi- signify a, a certain meaning that, that, that offends me or turns me off or gets me upset. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm laughing because I'm thinking of a specific specific scenario. The other day, uh, you had asked my sister and I if we want to go to a Dodger game. We both said no because we had plans and you you went into this whole fine i'm never going to ask you guys ever again because you always say no anyways and me and my sisters are laughing because it's just um i guess it was you going into a reaction thing and and and, we, and i do that all the time and too. what's the story what's the story you think i made about it they never want to spend time with me right well and it's funny because i actually said it right <laughs> i actually said you you know you don't ever want to spend time with me when when in the end of the day all it is is a no or no dad we have other commitments and if I really sat down and thought about that, it's like, here I am teaching you to be your word with your commitment. And then why would I want you to break your word to another commitment so that I can get what I what I want? And so at the end of the day, if if I'm upset be, in that moment because you said no, um, what would be the story I would made up that something else is more important than what I what I'm looking for? So a lot of it comes into being selfish, too. I want to spend time with my kids. So if I get Dodger tickets, guess who the people are? The first ones that I'm going to ask. Us, and then when we can't go, you ask Andrew. That's right. And then I'm going to ask some of my, <laughs> my, my other friends and some of the other people I like spending time with. But, you know, when I when I get those opportunities, my family is the first the first ones that I invite. Um, and we do that even with our vacations. Mm-hmm. Right. We have we have a, a legendary vacation tradition that we do every year to Yosemite. And you guys know the dates every year, a year in advance. And none of you put it in your calendars. And then right around, you know, a couple months, it's like, oh, Dad, what are those dates again? <laughs> <laughs> and I already know now, I've already, and it's cool because I've already accepted that um, if none of you go, I'm still going to have a good time. If none of you go, it doesn't mean that, you know, you don't love me. It doesn't mean that you don't want to spend time with me and your mom. It doesn't mean that, you know, you don't want that you've given up on the family. But I can easily make up those stories. It's kind of in it's in the programming. It's in the default. So as a conscious parent, I have to catch myself and remind myself, hey, Alex, relax. They have other commitments or, hey, they're getting older now. Or hey, they're in their twenties. They have their own. They have their own things. Or I have to. I have to choose to give it an empowering meaning rather than all the disempowering meaning. Or just decide it just means no for this year. Maybe next year will be a different opportunity. Right? Yeah, and and sometimes I think parents don't really understand that. It, you know, they act like they've never been a teenager or a young adult, and they don't understand that some things are important at that time, and maybe it won't be important later. So, for example, if your kid says no because they want to to dinner because they're going to the movies with their boyfriend or girlfriend, you have to understand that at that moment, that's the most important thing. And yeah, maybe in 20 years or five years, that's not going to be so important. They're going to want to go to dinner or lunch or whatever. But right now, that's really important. And that relationship is, is you know, needs to have attention or, you know, needs watering or whatever. But it's kind of like we understand when we want you to come to our games or our recitals that you have a work commitment and sometimes you know kids throw temper tantrums or whatever but we're kids you know and we we learn to let go of that from our parents so if you throw a temper tantrum every time i say no then i'm going to throw a temper tantrum when you said no that's right you're basically teaching your kids you know later on how to respond depending on you know the way that that you're responding um what's funny is that like it in my later years um 
it's like you know i have this your brother uh my oldest son he it's like i want to spend a lot of time with him in this in you know in his mid-20s and uh because he's so committed to other things in, in his life and he's off and he's running he's busy uh we miss each other a lot and so i don't get to spend that time that i'm yearning for you know as a father with my son and it's funny because every time that happens i get that feeling i got to remind myself when i was a son to my dad and in my 20s, I was off and running and I was off doing, you know, the clubs and, you know, you know, doing all, you know, focusing on the jobs that the new commitment jobs that I was working on and all that kind of stuff. So and it wasn't until I had my kids that I settled down and then I did a 360. So right around my mid 20s, I turned around and was spending more time with my dad and, you know, hey, you know, I was right there on his shoulder like that. Just and so I have to remind myself in those moments that. You know, when you were a kid, what were some of the things that you were focused on? I think as a parent, sometimes we forget that. We forget what our kids go through. And I think we wish we wish our kids were conscious enough to be able to sit down and go, you know, hey, dad, it's OK. You know, it doesn't just because I said no doesn't mean I don't want to spend time with you. But our kids don't know how to do that. So you have to learn that you have to create that perspective shift. You have to create a new way of looking at it because your kids, they, they don't know how to speak like that. Yeah, and I think kids are always reminding their parents, like, hey, weren't you a kid before? Weren't you a teen? But it, it doesn't come from the compassionate, powerful place of, hey, you know what? You've been my age before. Remember? Don't, you know, remember you wanted to go on that date with mom and, you know, or whatever. So they don't come from that place because they don't know. Well, they can't. But we would love that. That would be like, the, that would be the dream kid. Right. Is the kid that goes, hey, dad, it's okay. Don't, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, how about tomorrow? I'll get, I'll spend some time with you. And then it's like, oh, okay. Like they got their goody right yeah. like our kids don't know how to do that so you need to learn that perspective shift you need to uh, be of evolved enough and conscious enough to realize hmm maybe my son or daughter just you know they're they got this commitment that that i'm the one that taught them to be committed and now that they're committed on and going on to things now i'm the one that's sitting here complaining that they never spend time with me. yeah and i don't know if it helps but if if you're having that issue with your kid and you want to spend time with them and you know they're busy and just know that every time they say no they feel really guilty i have that that thing where if i say no to something i feel really bad and then i think well should i should i say no to that other commitment that i already made that's probably my fault because when you say no to something i invite you to i purposely when i go to that event i have a real good time <laughs> And, then, and you send me pictures. And then you hear about it later on, like, dang, uh, you missed it, Jasmine. And you go, what? And you're like, oh, we had a good time. So, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's one of my tactics. Yes. All right, you don't want to go with me? We're going to have a really good time. Yeah, I can see how, how, uh, kids because I, I go through this all the time is the guilt like I feel really bad for not either being there to support you or even just to be there at all to spend time with you I know sometimes you go to things that I have no interest in like poker parties or something like you go to those all the time and I don't want to go to those so I'm going to hang out with my little cousins and watch Frozen no but I <laughs> but I all <laughs> but I have guilt even after that when I'm doing something way better I still have guilt like oh you know I'm my dad really wanted me to go to that or he wanted me to go enough that he even asked so i think if it makes you feel better as a parent we feel guilty we feel bad we're not there uh so maybe that'll that'll help them out with their process yeah and you don't want to rub it in either you know um just realize that your your kids have their own life and that's their they're on their own journey and you want them to be out there you know doing those things you want them to get out there and you know um have some fun and try new things and you know especially when they're young you want them to have a life and and explore and do all those things because that's that's what develop that's where they develop grit and perseverance and determination and that's where the they're opening themselves up to the world and they're seeing things and they're figuring out who they are and and uh you know relative to to what's happening in their life and that kind of thing sounds good we'll get back to it after the break. Stay tuned for more of My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Welcome back to My Conscious Dad on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. If you're just joining us today, our topic is stop trying to change others and let them be. If you missed any of it or you want to hear it again, you can always find our podcast online. So before we finish this show, I had another question. I just wanted to ask if, if I'm a parent, how do I just let my kid be without letting them do whatever they want. I think that, you know, when when we say let them be, what we mean is, you know, stop trying to force them to be what you want them to be. Let them be who they are. And then your job as a parent is to course correct. 
Um, your job as a parent is while they're learning how to be who they are, your job is to point out some of the consequences of, of that's, that could happen when they make certain choices. Your job is to enforce consequences when they make some of the choices that aren't beneficial to them. Your job is to help them understand the consequences. Um, you, you know, your job is to guide them. It's not to make them be the vision that you have for them. Um, that's not to say that you shouldn't have a vision for your kids. You shouldn't have, um, you know, have a, a goal of like, you know, like for me, when you were, when you guys were little, I, I dreamt of the day that, that I would go to your guys' home when you guys were in your thirties, having Thanksgiving dinner with your families and your kids. And so I had a vision of what it looked like. I had a mold of, you know, you guys being outstanding citizens and compassionate, you know, people and being a contribution to society. And I had a mold and a vision of where I held you at, but I wasn't, uh, I didn't come from a place of like, obsessed with f forcing you to be that does that make sense and so it freed me up because i didn't i wasn't trying to force you to be that it freed me up to allow you to become who you are um and and and, it, and i and i still got to be able to kind of paint a picture for you that to let you know that this is where i see you this is where i hold you i hold you as a responsible young woman i see you as that confident you know caring compassionate man so it's okay to paint that picture for your kids but you can't force your kids to be something that they're not. It's already in their DNA. It's in their wiring to become who they're supposed to be in this world. And whether whether you want to roll with it or you want to try to control it and, and manipulate it to be what you want it to be. Yeah, once you let that idea go, whatever it is that you're trying to get to or, or control or shape, or once you let all of that... Um, I guess energy go in the energy you put into controlling them you kind of like you said free yourself up you free them up and what I kind of imagine as a parent who's just wound up so tight and is so frustrated because their kids not doing what they want as soon as they they let it go and let them be and figure themselves out there's finally peace for you absolutely and your kids you want more you want to experience more peace and more more joy and more passion and you want to let go of the stress do just exactly what you said surrender the thought surrender every energy and every part every ounce of you that wants to force your kid to be the way that you think that they should be and and choose to trust that your kids will unfold with your guidance and your wisdom and your ability to to create conversations and ask open-ended questions draw out decide to draw out their best rather than trying to manipulate them to be their best yeah and it's I a different come from yeah i think as a teen if we could just have that i i guess you could call it freedom or that extra uh support without it feeling like we're being controlled or pushed that's a lot more inspiring and it's a lot more effective and i'm gonna come from a different place you're going to come from a different place and both of those places are going to be powerful positive and and most importantly peaceful because i can't imagine being so so uh wound up frustrated with my mom or my dad because i'm not what they want to be and then there's something that we didn't talk about in this segment which earlier i talked about the fear um as a parent, the fear-based parenting, you know, and, and wanting our kids to be a certain way. So therefore we try to change them or mold them or make them go that direction. But what really the uh, interpersonal addiction that most of us have as parents when, it, when we're in that struggle is control. We want to control our kids to a certain point. Um, and, and again, it comes from a, a loving place. It comes from wanting our kids to, to do better and to, to be better but you can't muscle your kids to be who they are. Your kids are already on a natural path to become who they are. Your job is to get out of the way and be an advisor walking alongside of them rather than standing in front of them trying to corral them to go down that path. You need to step to the side of them and as they're choosing what they're choosing, just be over right there on the side of their shoulder and just kind of walk them through that. Even if they're going down that path or you know, okay, I've been down this path, I know where it's going, but come on, let's go. If you wanna go, I'm going with you. I'm just I'm gonna, and, and if and when it gets tough, I'll be there to pick you up and dust you off and not say I told you so, but 
hey, you know, let's let's get let's get you to sidestep and get you on a different road. Yeah, I love that. I I I can't even imagine because this hasn't happened to me yet. But um, I can't imagine how how great it would be for a kid who whose parents did tell them, you know, this is what's going to happen. Oh, we, oh, that, oh that definitely happened with you <laughs> in your college quest. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you, you were excited. You were committed to go to a college and it was, and there was no, there was no talking you out of it. And it was a certain point where me and your mom just decided, Hey, this is what she wants to do. It doesn't matter what we think. Uh, we got to support her in it. It doesn't matter. And we did. And when you came back saying that it wasn't a great decision and whatever, it was it was all good. We loved you and we dusted you off and put you on a different path. Yeah, yeah. there was no I told you so, which is really <laughs> effective. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on My Conscious Dad with me, Jasmine Urbina, and my dad, Alex Urbina. We're here every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. right here on your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. <laughs> SCBI makes me believe that I can be free and creative. SCBI.